welcome to the MBS Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Greetings, my friendly bronies and peggy sisters. May we always be friends forever. Greetings, greetings. Oh. <laughs> uh, but anywho, also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. Friendship and magic and bliss. <laughs> We're friends forever! Yay! Kill me. So, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna kill you. But anywho, before we start, this episode here is sponsored by Master of Lag. Thank you, Master of Lag, for, well, concluding the awesome series that we have here. So, anywho, what we are going to do today here is, well, talk about the top 10 issues for Friends Forever. Like, our personal top 10. If you guys at home want to play along, please list them down in the comments below. It'll be fun. Yay! And here's the thing. We all here have not shared our list with each other. So... Except for me and Norman. Uh, I've shared my list with him, but only because he had to help me. Oh, but I forgot. So, yeah. And I ain't looking at your list anymore. So, anywho... Okay. So, anywho... Uh, we have not told each other how we feel about it or what. So, because if you want to know in depth about our personal opinion on set reviews... Um, go look at the playlist where we have the Friends Forever issues 1 to 38. It's all there on the archives. Yes. So, anywho, I'll start off with myself first. So, going up at number 10 is Friends Forever issue number 9. And in this issue, Granny Smith helps Flim and Flam patch things up after they have a falling out. I find this comic to be fascinating because it's Granny Smith helping the two brothers that she despises. It's a really... Hmm, how would I put this? It really puts her character in perspective because it reminds her of her own past where she was the troublemaker and um, the falling out is because of a mare that the brothers like. And it reminded Granny Smith of her own experience and how bad she felt. With this issue, it defines Granny Smith as a character a bit and it describes the Flim Flam not being able to work proficiently without the others. And didn't that happen in Viva Las Pegasus? Pretty much. To a degree. To a degree. All right. So, yeah. They seemed better salesmen in Las Pegasus, yeah. but they weren't having as much fun. Oh, yep, yep, yep. But so, number nine is my number ten. What do you guys think of this one? Agree with me? No? Yes? Well, I enjoyed it. I, I It didn't make it into my top 10, but uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. And I enjoyed that Grant, although Granny now bears a certain responsibility for any con job the, the Flim Flams pull off moving forward. In the comic world. In the comic world. <laughs> although, honestly, maybe that's not fair. I mean, the, she chose to help two brothers reconcile. If they choose to squander her gift, that's still on them. Oh, true that. True that. But anywho, um, who wants to go next? Silver or Sappy? Usually I go for Silver, but I'm feeling I should change it up a bit. Oh, oh. Uh, give me a second. Rebellious. I know. Well, my number 10... Once again, I'm, I'm just going to make a disclaimer. I had a hard time finding any comics to put on this list. Mostly because I wasn't as caught up on Friends Forever as you guys were. I came into your little group uh pretty late into the game however i first off my honorable mention issue number 42 the main series i felt like it's a friend forever because of how unconventional it was mm -hmm. and plus it featured two characters i really like the art so but i can't put it on my list in any way shape or form because well it's not friends forever it's a main series title Indeed. Anyways, my number 10 was issue number 18. Oh, really now? Because of one reason. It was the first comic review I did with you guys. <laughs> Aww. That is literally the only reason why. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Yar. Other than that, that was my first, uh... The reason why it sat so low on this list, despite being very sentimental for me, was because of one factor. It also fueled my hatred towards Jay Foskett's art. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, he's so bitter. Okay. Yes, it made me bitter. All right, all right, all right. 
And Silver, what about you, my friend? Number 10. My number 10 would be Friends Forever number 2. Oh. Starring Discord and the Cutie Mark Crusaders. As the Crusaders are trying to earn their cutie marks, Discord decides to lend a chaotic hand to help out. But this ends up actually putting the town more in jeopardy, which is pretty par for the course with Cutie Mark Crusaders. Yep, true that. What I love about this this issue is that it, this came, because this came after that very lackluster issue one, uh, Everyone, was, I think everyone was a little wary of this, that maybe this series wasn't going to work. This was the series that first hinted, this issue rather, was what first hinted that this could be more about finding connections between characters we don't often see work together and finding that common ground or the similarity. Hey, I never realized that. What makes it at the end of my list is that there's a very heavy reliance on pop culture references and it's less the characters showing off and more moving between set pieces. It's fun and I had a laugh reading it, but if you want to get into the character meatiness, well, we'll have to talk about uh, that in other items on this list higher up. All right, all right. And, well, that's our number 10s. And let's go to number 9. And my number 9 is Friends Forever issue 18. <laughs> and it's not for... Oh boy. I know. It's not for the same reason as you, Sappy, but I like this comic. This comic spoke to me. How do I put this? It's one of those scenarios where it shows Fluttershy still being... That shy, timid pony where she's uh, where she's not comfortable, and in this issue here, she has to face her bullies, and the ending for this one was pretty sweet because said bully kind of learned her lesson and appreciate what Fluttershy did and whatnot, and yeah, uh, also Rainbow Dash is a jerk and so on, and I think this issue here starts the fall of the pairing where oh. This comic portrays Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy. I wonder what are they going to do? Nothing till the end. Great. So yeah, this is number 9. Full review is in the playlist if you want to go check it out. So, Seppi, you're number 9. Uh, number 9, I had issue 3 on my list. It features uh, Spike and Celestia. Ah. I, I don't know. It was my introduction into the Friends Forever series, other than the uh, issue was with uh, Twilight and um, Shining Armor, which I thought was okay at the time. I, I wasn't really that interested into it, but I liked the issue with Celestia and uh, Spike more. So that's also kind of like a personal, sentimental type of uh, item on my list. Other than that, like, you know, it was an early comic series. Some things could be fixed and improved upon. But I enjoyed it nonetheless during the time. All right, at then, least. All right, then. And Silver, you're number nine. My mighty number nine. <laughs> I sponsored it. better game. than the video game. <laughs> I'm sorry. My number nine is Friends Forever number 15. This stars Applejack and Mayor Mayor. When Applejack gets a citation for the barn on Sweet Apple Ears being too big... She goes to Town Hall to have it out and is nearly undone by the labyrinthian bureaucracy. But in steps Mayor Mayor to give Applejack a chance to maybe bring a little practicality to uh, Ponyville's workings and then to save the day in a crisis. And what I loved about this ep issue is that it offered a future for Applejack. She's been very stagnant in terms of she works on Sweet Apple Acres, loves Sweet Apple Acres, is perfectly happy on Sweet Apple Acres. Can I see Sweet Apple Acres again? Sure I can, Sweet Apple Acres. <laughs> All right, then. And but then you sort of you sort of realize, what's next? And here's Mayor Mayor saying, you know what? You love this town so much more. And you can help the farm and the town if maybe one day you became mayor. And even if this never happens, it's a fascinating idea. True that. Applejack gets older takes on more responsibility, decides to run for mayor. That'd be incredible. Mm, true that, true that. I could live with that. And it, it's lower on the list because of, well, one, Mayor Mayor doesn't come into this until almost halfway through the, the comic, it seems. And the crisis that they tackle is suddenly Sweetie Belle has magic powerful enough to affect the whole town. Say, what? <laughs> what? Yes, indeed. 
Uh, I'm noticing something here because the two comics that you mentioned are on my list too, but they're not at the expected numbers that you mentioned. So yeah, you, you guys are going to be surprised where they are. <laughs> oh well, boy. There you go. Yep, yep. So anywho, on to the number eight. Eight, right? Yes, the eight. So my number eight would be Press Forever issue number two. <laughs> 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 Oh, uh-huh. it's a bit higher than you, Silver. Uh, and just a bit. I know, I know. And <laughs> bit, a little bit. And the reason why is, I love the interaction between the CMCs and Discord. And Discord here wasn't trying to be malicious towards the CMC. In the end, he was trying so hard to help the CMC get their cutie mark that he would go through heaven and earth just to help them get their cutie marks which i saw as a kind gesture and this here states that the discord has other friends besides fluttershy and it's pretty cool i did put issue 20 on the list but i took it off because i had something else to put in it and issue 20 kind of relates to this one because of how he doesn't want to screw things up between the four of them including Fluttershy. So yes, there is kind of very long game play to get to that end. So yeah, whatever. But in the end, um, this is my number eight because interactions, I enjoyed it very much. And Seppi, what about your number eight? Issue number seven. Oh, number seven. <laughs> yeah, your so eight is the seven? Pinkie Pie and Princess Luna. I, ironically enough, considering uh, I, I praise... Uh, Celestia more than Luna, but I've actually found myself liking a lot of Luna comics. Anyways, so Pinkie Pie and Luna, uh, their comic issue. I recently had to read over it just again. It was hilarious to me. I, I found it funny, humorous, a little heartfelt, and I enjoyed it. Hmm. Um, I don't really have much to say other than that. Oh, um, I mean, I just read the comic this morning as a, uh, Helpful placement. Oh, all right, then. All right, then. And Silver, yes. what about your number eight? Well, if I need to comment on Safi's number eight. That comic made Luna Kanye West. <laughs> it turned my favorite princess into Kanye West. <laughs> yeah. Well, too bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. 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 She. Now my number eight. She. <laughs> yes. My crazy eight. She. Is Friends Forever number 17, yeah. Oh. 17, I think I have that on my list. Oh, I have that on my list, but it's higher up. Well, this one stars Twilight and Big Macintosh. Twilight is having trouble with stress and disorganization, so she turns eventually to one of the most proactive and organized ponies, Big Macintosh. He gets more in a day than most ponies get done in a week. And so this is a fun little romp comparing twilight's bombastic nature against big macintosh's calm and quiet featuring a very fun journey inside big macintosh's noggin Mm -hmm. inside out before inside out existed it's the truth (laughs) although i guess we didn't get to see his disgust did we Uh, that'd be interesting there was a bit of it i don't remember either way it was some much needed fleshing out for big mac you know we don't often get to see what's going on between those ears Mm -hmm. And, well, Silver, I'm, I'm uh, sorry to Kanye West you a bit, but this is my number seven. Oh, you got to let me finish? I'm happy for you. I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> yeah, but no, honestly, I do agree with you. Well, at least we can skip over it. Yeah, it's, it's my number seven. And I do agree with you, Silver, that this here, like, I, I enjoy this comic because it we get to look inside Big Matt's head. Like, we get to see his multiple personalities that he has, well, not in terms of multiple personality disorder, but his thought process and whatnot. And one of those thought process is the curiosity in him where, you know what? You're going to my head. Why don't go into your head? Let's see how that works. <laughs> you mean like his psychology? Yes, thank you. Like uh, in uh, a nutshell. In a nutshell, but also literally diving into her, her skull via unscrewing her horn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the expression on Twilight. How unicorn magic works. Why not? Yep. Why but not? This is I mean, I've always thought of, um, you know, unicorn magic just being tied into the mental process. Yeah, but so. this is inside Big Mac's head, so anything goes. 
Uh, so anyway, that was my number seven. What about you, Seppi? <laughs> oh, my number seven. Let me. I'm going back and forth between a bunch of other things, so forgive me. I had number thirty-three. I already forgot what number thirty-three was. <laughs> Well, check it on the list. And number 33 was when a traveling rodeo comes to town, Applejack must discover the secret history of Cherry Jubilee. Oh, right. That one. Yeah, I actually enjoyed it for the sake of finding out Cherry Jubilee's past. I've sort of enjoyed that character based on design, but I wish I knew more about her. She seemed so nice and generous, and I wanted to know more about her, so... When I found, like, this uh, comic based on her past, or when we read it and whatnot, I, I found it interesting. It was a nice, indi- you know, indication of her past or, you know, ponies and stuff. Bleh. <laughs> bleh, 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 bleh. All right, I don't all have right. much to say. I'm sorry. This cool. It's cool. Like, if you were on this, I think 33 were on the review, right, Happy. Yeah, I was on the review. Yes. I think I expressed myself better there yeah. over that. So uh, if people want yeah. to know, just check it out there. And Silver, what about your yeah. number seven, was it? Number seven. L- Lucky Sevens, which funny enough is friends for number eight. Oh. Huh. <laughs> Sefi's eight was a seven and my seven is an eight. <laughs> All righty then. This stars a- uh, Applejack and Rarity on a cross-country no, trip. No, I didn't mention Applejack and Rarity. It was a... Uh, Pinkie Pie and Luna. Well, Luna, yes, but, Luna, Luna, Luna. But it's the it's the naming conventions. Yeah. I believe I believe your eight was number seven, and my seven is number eight. Oh, now it makes more sense. <laughs> Sorry. Good. Could you explain it to me? <laughs> no. Uh, but this one is just a f- uh, a fun cap kind of parody of planes, trains, and automobiles. Once again, highlighting the the delightful contrast between Rarity and Applejack. The only downside to it is that it introduces Longhorn and his gang, who would go on to reappear in one of the in the main series in one of my least favorite two parters. But that's that's a separate story. This one was just fun, silly, had Andy Price's great artwork, and I just love seeing these two pair off. Uh Silver, so that that one is also on my list, but I'm not gonna reveal where it is. <laughs> uh I'm getting. I'm betting it's within your top five. Oh. Mostly because we're not that far off from top five. Oh, yeah. And yes, uh, moving on to number six. Uh, number six. For me, number six will be Friends Forever, issue 11. And this is... Uh, in this issue, Spitfire enlists Rainbow Dash help in instructing a class for summer camp foals. Remember this one where uh, Spitfire screams at kids? <laughs> Fun times. I know. Childhood trauma. <laughs> it's for breakfast. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I, I, I love this one. This one fits all the criteria for a Friends Forever. You have the two title characters working together. You have one a pony teaching a lesson to the other and vice versa. And it develops more characters out of the ponies that we don't usually get. And... Looking at this art, I, I think this is the first time that we get to see J. Fosdia's art, right? It was one of the earliest examples. I think it was the first. Yep. And oh, how people have gotten cross about these things. Yeah, yeah. But honestly, I find his art in this issue adorable. It is so cute. <laughs> oh, yes. You're, you're breaking, Safi. Keep it up. <laughs> I know you don't like it, Seppi, but you have to give credit where credit's due. And I see this one, and I like it. I really, really like it. <sighs> I apologize, Norman. I am very highly opinionated over Jay Fox's guitar. Yeah, well, can't blame you, but still. Not much I can say other than I am very highly opinionated towards him. Yeah, well, can't say much, but still, um, I highly enjoy this comic because of... This, like, this comic here is, to me, is what GeForce gets best at. But anywho, number six for you, Seppi. Number six is issue number 25 with Twilight and Rainbow Dash. And the base, the base plot of this is that Rainbow Dash's wings go missing. 
Oh boy, the horrifying implications that somebody stole Rainbow Dash's wings with magic is in of itself an entertaining story. <laughs> it's horrifying and terrifying, and I don't know what would happen if I lost smiling wings without my own will, whatever. Bleh. If somebody basically stole my wings, I'd be mad. I mean, I no longer have wings. I'm a unicorn now. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was horrifying yet entertaining, and I liked it. That is all. All righty then, all righty then. And Silver, your number six. Well, funny enough, my number six also features some Wonderbolts. Oh. It's Rainbow Dash and Soren. Oh, interesting. Soren, it, it goes missing for a while, and and uh, Spitfire recruits Rainbow Dash to fly up to one of the tallest mountains in Equestria and get him to come back. But Soren is determined to conquer this mountain and prove that he's a great flyer once and for all. And so it's going to take the mutual effort of Soren and Rainbow Dash to get him out of his funk. And also the amazing job of Derpy Hooves. Well, she traverses the mountain's treachery just for the sake of the mail. I know. Our beloved Muffin Mare... Male mare. Yes, she is best pwn. <laughs> and I remember that review because of, well, it was just the both of us doing it and uh, it was just awesome. The the indomitable muffin mare. Indeed. <laughs> but I like this for, I like this more for giving Soren a little bit of development and showing that just because you're a Wonderbolt, you could still have insecurities, you could still worry about the future. And Soren is a different kind of Wonderbolt than Rainbow. Rainbow has a lot of natural talent, but Soren really had to work for his position. He, in some ways, he has to put forth even more effort just to keep pace with Rainbow's natural talent. And that's amazing too. Like I do like that story there. Yeah. Then I don't mean I don't mean that to disparage anyone in particular. It's just that's sometimes how it goes. Some people are. More naturals, others are have to work a little harder, but they still love what they do. He's good times. Yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, and on to number five. And number five for me is Friends Forever, issue 29. In this issue, Rarity assists Mod Pie in her rock science interests and helps her discover her inner enthusiasm. Oh boy, uh, you and I have that on I a know. very different level. I know. Uh, but anywho, why I like this one is because it shows Mod Pie having more than one personality. The way that the story is told is very fun and amazing. And I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just that it's a lot of fun. In the comics or in even in the show, you get to see Mod Pie being very monotone, stone-faced. She doesn't really show that much emotions. But in the end... In this comic here, we get to see her writing in her diary or Rarity reading her diary with her permission. Uh, and she expressed a lot of emotions, like how nervous she was meeting her idol, the professor, how angry she was when her rival was there and so on, how scared she was when a tiger was about to maul them, and how amazed she was when Rarity fought the tiger and so on. And with that little detail, I really enjoyed it. And also it fulfilled the requirement of a Friends Forever comic where you get the star character interacting with one another. So yay, awesomeness. And yay. Seppi, what about your number five? My number five was issue number 13 of IDW's Friends Forever. And it features Rarity and Bab Seed. There's that silver. Yes. No? Nothing? Yes. Oh, you. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I have a feeling this is at least up the up there in your list. Anyways, no spoilers. I enjoyed the interactions between Rarity and Babs. I mean, I found it really cute how how Babs is like into rollerblading. I mean, we'd find out that she's later into other things, but this was pre um I forget the episode where they were it was the one with Apple Bloom and Luna. Anyways, I, I just found it to be a cute comic. And plus, Rarity, best girl, best girl always. Just, it's it's Rarity and Babseed. But it was cute. 
and fun. And I like how Rarity actually showed an interest towards trying to see what Bab likes to do. Because that's sometimes what a kid needs. Like, hey, I want to do something. I, I don't really have much say other than All right, it's cool, it's cool. Oh, and Silver, what about you? Number five. Friends Forever number 20, starring Princess Luna and Disco. Oh, I had to took that one out because I had to replace oh, another, no. but still. Not to worry. So you've, you've covered a lot of the great strengths in this, you know, Discord's presentation. The fact that he and Luna form sort of a friendship, and at the end, they're, they're closer than they were when they started. I love Discord. He tries to think of himself as a force of nature, and Luna is trying to encourage him to see himself more as a person. And it's also just fun to see uh, Luna get involved. Plus, all you have to do, uh, there's a cover where uh, Luna and Discord are dressed up like the Matrix. <laughs> All you have to do is put Wolverine in the background. You've got an instant comic seller right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sales, baby. Woo! Woo! Sales. Sales pony ship. Yep, yep. Is that pony silver? I think there's more, right? No? Well, that's about it. I mean, you covered the, a lot of the strengths already, so I don't need to add to it. I just have to say, I like this issue a great deal. All right. And, well, <laughs> great. Now I have nothing to say. Uh, and my number four. My number four. I know that this is going to get a lot of flack from a lot of people just because of who's in it, but I don't care. I like this one. And it's Friends Forever, issue 26. In this issue, Shining Armor is forced to work with Prince Blue Blood on a diplomatic mission to Yakistan. <laughs> so which, which character are we not supposed to like? Blue Blood or Rutherford? Take your pick. <laughs> uh, most of the people are not going to... Oh, you know what? Yeah, you got a good point. <laughs> Uh, but the, the reason why I like this one and it's way high up on my list is because the characteristic here. Okay, first thing you need to understand, what does Blue Blood even do? He never showed anything or any personality type besides the being the jerk prince from season one. I mean, we got nothing out of him since then. And we're not even going to talk about the deviation comics. That is something else for another day. But in this issue here, we get to see him do his job, which is schmoozing with royalty, um, getting to do diplomatic stuff. And I like it so much where Shining Armor is trying to be the honorable prince, doing the honorable thing, and doing the culturally exchange stuff, the, or I understand your cultures, while Prince Blue Blood here is just like, Hmm, the Griffin food is horrible. <laughs> and schmoozing with the others so to get closer to Prince um, Rutherford. And it's just so amazing and awesome. I don't know, man. Like, this comic is so much fun. It makes me ree! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Silver, any, any input on this? Because you're being quiet about this one. <laughs> well, uh... I have a surprise for you. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, okay. Uh, Nesavi, what's your number four? Issue number 38. Oh, my. I feel like this was a comic that was highly anticipated. Although, while it did come off as a repeat of the micro comic for Luna, except it features both Celestia and Luna instead of Celestia being in the day spa. I, I enjoyed the comic. I mean, sisterly, combative, uh, sibling rivalry at its finest. Hell, it reminds me of me and my brother growing up, especially with our significant age difference. Awesome. Okay, I need to ask you, did you understand the thing about yes. the strawberries? Yes. Oh, so it's just me then. All right, then. I'm sorry, Norman. It's just very hard to understand. <laughs> well, uh, all right, then. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> but anywho, Silver, your number four. Is the same as your number four. <laughs> oh boy. Why did I not... How did I see that coming? <laughs> so yes, I too enjoyed seeing Blue Blood actually, not necessarily in a positive way in that he's like this morally upstanding guy. He's just very, very effective. And then to see his, his top, his diplomacy tips, where... He actually owns his insincerity. Pretend you take an interest, even if you don't. It's like, it's kind of rare, especially in this culture of ponies where everyone's encouraged to be 
super nice and hold a grudge against those who are mean, Blue Blood gets away with it. <laughs> I know. And is actually a very, very effective. And in a weird way, he is the number one prince in Equestria, only because Rutherford's a moron and Shining Armor, unfortunately, he gets set up to fail a lot. But he's too noble. The thing is, with Shining Armor, his character type is, well, the White Knight. He is there to protect the others. And the way that he fail in the Tyrek invasion was pretty sad. Yeah, that's just it. He's meant to defend people, but he does a... He's unfortunately done a very poor job of it thus far. Uh, well, most of it, the... It's it's my hope that he'll get, he'll get good. <laughs> yeah, and most of the yeah. villains that he faced have a power level of over 9,000. So, yeah. Rawr! 9,000! So, yeah. Yeah, I can't believe we have the same number. Yay, that's rare. <laughs> well, rare is he? Uh, yes, indeed. And off to... That's funny. Uh, anywho, on to the number threes. Uh, my number three is Friends Forever issue 15. And uh, if you guys remember, this was Silver's number one now. Uh, that was my number nine. Yep. So you placed it much higher than yep. I. And for me, why I placed it much higher is because of... Applejack's interaction with the cast. First, we see Applejack getting pissed at politics because this place is a mess. And Mayor Mayor shows her the ways and whatnot. And I do agree with you, Silver. Like, that idea there of her being one day take, being the mayor of Ponyville, I do like that idea and I do like that concept and where it goes or where it, or where it could go for the future. That is very fun and amazing. And I don't know, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, but I put it higher because of the interactions and how it made me feel reading this comic. It was a lot of fun. And in the end, for this one, Mary Mary just says, Yeah, I, I just uh, trolled you because I want you to have another outlook on your life. So I hope you think about politics for the future. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll end up with Filthy Rich in, ta- in charge of the town. We all know how that oh goes. Oh my god, we did not even review that one. <laughs> of course, we didn't review it because it was fantastic. It was completely beyond reproach. <laughs> no, filthy... Silver, why? Because I can. Uh, Watch, I can, e- I, can, I can even can combine it with my airbonics because <laughs> that's whack. Yo. <laughs> It's straight up tripping. <laughs> anyway, Seppi, your number three. I My like number Seppi. three was actually issue number 20. Ah. I, I don't really have much to add on other than what you said, other than I enjoyed the dream sequence. Oh, yeah. They were very, very creative, and I liked seeing Discord psychology at its chaotic best. <laughs> well, All righty then. Anyway. All righty then. And Silver, what about your number three? Look, number three, it's fantastic. Excellent choice. No. I like Safi's anger. I definitely give it an eight. <laughs> All right. My Why, number... I'm not even a ten? A I, I joke with Josh Scorcher. His rage, definitely ten. <laughs> it's fan- His tears, absolutely fantastic. I work for him. Does that make any difference or no? If you can make him cry, that'd be even better. <laughs> I don't... I'll try I one I don't day. think you want to make your boss cry. No. This artwork is so awesome! <laughs> anyway, number three for me. Friends Forever, number 31, starring Rainbow Dash and Little Strongheart. In this, Rainbow is summoned to, to the uh, Buffalo Grounds because they need her help to complete an important quest to bring back Summer. And this is a, a fascinating journey. It gives the Buffaloes, a, a, in my opinion, a stronger presentation than what we saw in, uh, in Over a Barrel. It's a great journey f- with showing Strongheart and Rainbow Dash uh, playing off one another, contrasting and showing the need for balance. Little Strongheart's emphasis on tradition versus Rainbow Dash's need for haste. And then, oh, there's the the grand artwork as they tell the legend of the Rainbow Crow and how it brought fire from the sun at great sacrifice to itself. It was a fantastic tale all around, fantastic artwork all around. I love it. Hey, that's pretty good. True, that I, I I totally agree. I totally agree on that, and it was on my list too. But I had to drop it out. I, let's just say it's in my 
honorary mentions because it was good. The artwork was good. The story was good. The comedy was good too. I love the fact that they, the, the the fine Buffalo tradition is a water slide. Yay! Yay! <laughs> uh, but still, but still, uh, let's hit on to number two. And my number two is Friends Forever, issue three. And this issue, Spike enlists Princess Celestia's help in getting a birthday present for Twilight Sparkle. I think Sappy put it at number nine. Yeah, I and did. I, I put it way, way up. Way Ooh. up. Oof. The reason why is this is one of the few issues where we get to see some characteristics from Princess Celestia. It was rare. Yeah, when we didn't have much interaction with Celestia. And it shows that Celestia cares. It shows that Celestia wants to um, give back to Twilight and whatnot. Like It shows that other side of her. And I highly enjoy this one. This one was full of awesome memories and awesome feelings. Especially from our review. Because I remember... This review, having my first foray into voicing or reading the comics because the Rob Lobster part, I remember reviewing it and remember trying to do the Rock Lobsters as gangsters. You remember that? Silver I, do remember that. I don't remember that's for sure because I wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah, mooks. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think I did a good job. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was my number uh, number two. So, anywho, Seppi, what about your number two? My number two was issue number 17, which was also a recent pick, but I enjoyed it that much to put it up on my number two. One, I liked diving into the psychology of Big Mac, which I believe was also mentioned, but it was also for... A lot of recent events have made that an emotional pick for me. Where I've been working too hard and I've been stressing out. And honestly, that was something that I needed to read, especially as of recent. With the uh, work schedule and health issues and whatnot that I'd rather not get into at the moment. Emotional pick. All right, you know. And plus I enjoyed Twilight's little freakouts and how her stress had manifested into black slob. <laughs> Uh, and how... It's like, yeah, that's a mo That's stress in a nutshell, just a big pile of black sludge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Much fun to be had. Uh, but anywho, um, Silver, what it's about your It's the same as two? your number two, Norman. Ah! <laughs> what? Really? Oh, boy. <laughs> Prince Rover number three, <laughs> Celestia and Spike. Oh, I thought you guys didn't like it as much as I... Okay. Okay, then. So yeah, I'm, it... I'm alone on my conquest, just, then. Just for this tier. It showed the fullness of what Friends Forever could be. After issue one was a dud, issue two got us on the right track. Issue three, I think, really became the measuring stick for all other stories. You get to show two characters who don't interact a lot in going on a journey together, pursuing a shared goal, growing as a result of one another and becoming more than they were at the start and closer friends. And I love it. I think it was fantastic. I love it so much. Yep. And I think this is the measuring. He loves it. <laughs> and I think that this is the measuring tape that we uh, try to ca carry forward with the Friends Forever issues because near the end of the cycle of the Friends Forever issues, we don't get that a lot. A good example of that one is... Spike and Luna. Concept was good, but execution was meh. But your review was awesome, Silver. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad as long as Silver's review was great. <laughs> I certainly hope so. I like when I can give a good review. Make yeah. people happy. I just remember it because of Homestar right now. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and on to number one, our most favorite Friends Forever issue. So, for me, my favorite Friends Forever issue is issue number 8. In this issue, Applejack and Rarity goes on a road trip that is fraught with disasters. So, I have to confess, I, I have a bias with this one. Um, Let me guess, Rarity? No, not really. 
Okay, first things first. Let me go before I explain or confess. This comic here is full of fun and adventure. You have Rarity, you have Applejack. Combining them both is just so much fun. It's the total opposite and they have to stick together for this road trip. Rarity is just taking this lightly while Applejack is business, business, business. Numbers, is this working? <laughs> and at every turn, Rarity is trying to <laughs> take um, Applejack's business trip very lightly. Um, from going to the world's largest ball of yarn to going to a show and whatnot. And the end of the comic here is <laughs> kind of pointless where Applejack accidentally went to the wrong place. <laughs> Thanks, Granny Smith. Oh, yeah. They went to Canada. <laughs> yeah. But the confession here is that uh, I bought this comic in the UK, a physical comic of this one in the UK, and got to meet up with Heather Breckel and ask her to sign the comics. She was happy to do so, and she was a great gal. I think I invited her on the show once before, so yay, that's fun. And a week later, I went to Singapore for a, con for a convention, and I got to meet up with Andy Price, and I got him to sign the comics. He was surprised to see Heather Breckel sick there. So that was awesome too. And I do believe that I showed you a picture of uh, one of the drafts that didn't went Yes, in, I right? believe so. Where Granny Smith is operating a radio rather than uh, reading a scroll. Yeah, so that was kind of awesome there too. So getting info like that. So this makes this comic or this issue here my number one because of the experience of getting to meet the crew. And one more signature that I need to get is Katie Cook, just to complete the set. Then I will frame this comic, never to be read. <laughs> well, I have the digital issue, Silver. I bought this comic twice. But even so, there's always something tragic about something, something that's kept from its purpose. Uh, yeah, true. But still, it's art. And I enjoyed it. Well, you know what? It's fun. Still, yeah, true. But still, but still, I highly enjoy. And I think I got a physical print of this cover here. So that makes it even awesome. You know what? I, I, I'm biased. Like this comic number one for me. Yay. And I think in the review, we get to scream Winnie Land. <laughs> Winnie Land! <laughs> Winnie Land! <laughs> Winnie Land! <laughs> I wasn't there, but I'm glad you guys had fun at least. Shut up and take my did. money! <laughs> uh, but any... Wait, you're giving me money? Yay! I get more coffee. <laughs> uh, but anywho, so, Sappy, what about your number one? My number one is also biased because I have been doing nothing but biased. <laughs> Comic Reviews is number 29. Oh. With uh, Mod Pie and Rarity. <laughs> One, one, because we got to review this on my birthday. Two, best girl rarity. Three, Mod has emotions! I especially enjoy Sassy Mod. <laughs> I love my Sassy Mod. Messy Mod. I know that it's Silver a has a very uh, distaste towards any emotion shown by the Mod Pie, but I don't care. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. you, take, you take Sassy and you take Mod, you got Messy. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Silver, what about my number one? one? Well, it's already been mentioned on this list by this Sapphire Heart song, and that is Friends Forever number thirteen. Why did Rarity. I have a feeling that would be your number one? Bec I think because in my review of it, I actually said that it was my favorite to date. Exactly. Well, nothing quite toppled it from that perch. It was the purest. Okay, if issue three was the measuring stick, this is the paragon by which all of their friends forevers could reach. It took two characters who never interacted before. Okay, well, okay, they interacted in the main series, but not terribly directly. This was the first time Rarity and Babs really engaged each other one-on-one. -on -one. And the comic found an insight into both their characters and made everyone look good. No one was the bad guy. Even, even Sapphire Shores got to offer some wisdom. And... Then just throw in all these great cameos in the roller derby, including Shining Harmor, 
who I'm still convinced is Cadence in disguise. It's a very <laughs> obvious disguise. I, I love it. It is my favorite of the Friends Forever line, and nothing could quite knock it off that perch. I wouldn't have complained if anything had, but there you go. There you go. Always prevails. I reread this one, and I don't know. I didn't have that same feeling. Yeah, then you're dead to me, Norman. You're dead to me. Hey. Let us all weep for the Norman, for he is deceased unto me. Oh, uh, no. But anywho. So, that was our top 10 best issues of Friends Forever. If you have your own list that you want to share with us, do put it down in the comments, because... No matter what number we put in there, it's our own opinion. And, well, if you like something, you like it. Doesn't mean you have to follow what we have to say. Out of uh, the three of us, only me and Silver had two issues that we agreed upon. And like I mentioned before, we didn't discuss this beforehand. And I'm surprised that um, our number four was the same. And what was it again, Silver? I can't hear you because you're dead to me. You heard him, Norman. <laughs> you know, the dead cannot hear, and therefore Norman could not hear me, yes. And so I could not hear him asking that our number four was Friends Forever, number 26 with Shining Armor and Prince Blue Blood. No, that is far beyond the realms of my mortal hearing. Uh, what was the other one? I forgot. We had another one. Well, number no, three, right? Now you're just making me... I believe it was number two. Now you're just making me drop the pretense, oh, yeah, Norman. Sorry. Why you have got to be a buzzkill? <laughs> Why are you being a buzzkill? <laughs> because I activated my trap card. Oh, uh, yeah, well, you activated my alu card. Hey, kids, <laughs> want to see a dead body? No, our our number twos were the same. Celestia and Spike. Uh, yeah, all right. Oh, but anywho, but anywho, uh, once again, I need to thank Master of Black for this awesome, awesome chance to uh, do a top 10 because without him, well, we probably wouldn't have thought about doing it. Did Probably we not. We, we are sometimes an unfocused bunch, and so a little extra kick in the batoot can help. Yes, indeed, because yeah. I think we still haven't done any of the Equestria Girls ever since the Friendship yeah, Game came out. We're missing a whole lot, I think. Oh, well, yeah, true that, but still, yeah. there, there's still fun to be had with that series, but that's for another topic for another day. So, anywho, um, that's our hot on the whole um, Friends Forever issues. Uh, there's certainly more that I wanted to talk about because I really, really wanted to put Gilda and Rarity on. But nah, I just couldn't because the overall story was didn't work. The overall story didn't work. And I think later down the line, the Friends Forever issue kind of suffers from the focus. Focus. Like the focus? Yes, thank you. Um, lack of focus. Yes, that's the word. Uh, lack of focus for the characters. And I think you mentioned that earlier on before I spotted it. Well, Silver. it's been a thing. I, I look over our list and I kind of lament that Fluttershy didn't get really any great Friends Forever issues. Mm -hmm. I really want to put Fluttershy and Sakura in just because for the fact that, hey, hey Fluttershy and Sakura... Uh, two of my favorite characters, but nah, it's actually a Discord. Well, I, I take that back. You you had um, Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash's issue on your list. Mm -hmm. So but I'm glad it was you very got... low. It was low, but at least it was there. I didn't have any Fluttershy issues on my list, and she's my favorite pony. How does that work? <laughs> How does that work? I asked you. I had a better outlet in in this case than you, Silver, so I kind of feel bad about that. I mean, there's a lot of good comics. My favorite feel Pony had a lot of good issues. You should feel bad about your happiness. How dare you find joy in this world? <laughs> How could uh, you? But in all honesty, but in all honesty, there's a lot of good issues here. And I do remember what, the one where Pinkie Pie and Twilight were interacting and they had um, Twilight is trying to stop Pinky from ODing on sweets. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, I don't know, that, that didn't really put it on my list for reasons. I don't remember. Anyways. Yes, anyways, anyways. 
so anyway, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com or coffee.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I like to thank Lurker Cat, Star String, Master of Like, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you guys for the awesome support. And Seppi, you wanted to plug in your Patreons? Send me a coffee at Le Coffee. I don't really have much to say other than send me a coffee. Oh. I want coffee. All right. Feed into my caffeinated addiction. Well, next okay. week we're going to take a look back at an episode. Episode 21 of Season 7, Marks and Recreation, in which the Cutie Mark Crusaders opened their... It is not a My Little Pony vs. Transformers crossover, though that would be awesome. So, we'll see you guys for that review next week. Alrighty then. So, anyway, I, I have been Seen 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 And I've been the Sapphire. So, anyway, we'll guys see you Adios. later. See ya. Bye-bye. We are finally finished with Friends Forever. What's next, Silver? <laughs> we split up. Oh, no. We're having a we breakup. No it's like the Beatles. Forever. Well, I guess no, sooner or later it's... we'll have to delve into Legends of Magic. Oh, that's pretty soon. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs>